Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. This new pain, this new trouble that has come into your life doesn't come as a surprise to the one who loves you. To the one who loves you most, to the one who loves you best, to the one who has loved you the longest of anybody. Not the, the unexpected test results or the, the unknown diagnosis. Not the, the new recent tragedy. Not the new, the new painful reality, the way that your life just is right now. None of those things happened because somehow your God was caught napping and he didn't realize this was going to happen and just didn't have enough time to stop it. He knew and he knows. And tomorrow's headlines are not written. The headlines for the world that we live in are the headlines for your own personal life. Those headlines are not written without his permission. The one who loves you, the one who loves you best, the one who loves you the most, the one who's loved you the longest. Jesus was speaking to his disciples in, in John chapter 14. He was speaking to them in the calm before the storm, the, the storm that he knew was coming. He knew exactly what was happening. There the, the storm of Good Friday was on the way. The whole world was on his shoulders. The plan of salvation was coming to its culmination. The, the, the wickedness and the hatred of his enemies were, were coming to a, a head. And this was just hours before he would, he would almost fall down in the Garden of Gethsemane, saying, my soul, my very soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. This is killing me, he could have said and been accurate. It's, it's knowing all that was going to happen to him, knowing what was coming, that Jesus looked into the eyes and to the hearts of his disciples and with great compassion and even greater power, he simply says to them, do not let your hearts be troubled. There are going to be plenty of things that are going to happen, he could have said to them. Lots of things that are going to happen. They're going to make you want to run away in fear. They're going to make you want to, to tremble in terror and be filled with anxiety, but do not dismay. Do not be frightened. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And the word there that Jesus uses in the Greek language, it has this, it's a word picture. It, the word for to, to be troubled, it, it's, it, it kind of means a, a boiling pot. It's just, not just a, a nice simmer if you're a, a foodie, not just a nice simmer with little bubbles coming up, but a rolling boil, a, a ship on the sea that is being tossed back and forth by a sea that is crashing together like this. That's the word. A heart that is troubled is restless. It is unsettled. It's constantly anxious. It's always searching for peace and calm, but can never find it. It's never at peace. There's an early church father that really says it wonderfully. St. Augustine, we call him, he said in a prayer, he, he speaks to God and says, Lord, you created us to be yours. You created us to be your, your possession. And my heart is restless until it finds its rest in you. My heart will always be restless until it rests in you. So Jesus was speaking to his disciples and he, he had tenderly loved them in such wonderful ways before. He told them, I'm the good shepherd who lays down his life for you. And with my death and by my death, I bring you life. So do not let your hearts be troubled. I have come as the Messiah to destroy the power of everything that causes you to be afraid. Just think about that for a moment. I have come to tear the jaws out of everything that can hold you in fear. Your sin and your guilt cannot cannot condemn you any longer. 
The devil, the accuser, he can't point his finger at you any longer. He can't accuse you of anything. And death, that makes you want, your knees want to knock, death will never hold you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, Jesus says. And he speaks with that same tender, intimate love to you. As if it was just you in the building, you in the room, with that same tender, powerful, compassionate, ongoing concern and love for you. You keep that in mind with whatever is new or whatever is old that troubles you, that causes such pain and breaks your heart. Martin Luther, when he preached on these texts, these words of Jesus, he, he said, it, and he spoke from experience, of course, he said, we should expect trouble in this world. We should expect these things, not with a cynicist's heart, like, oh, Eeyore, that expecting everything to go bad. No, he says, we should have listened to Jesus and we know that in this world we will have trouble. We should expect these things, Luther says, but at such times, we must hear Christ speaking these words to us. So we've got the best of all worlds. It doesn't come as a surprise to us either when the trouble hits, when tragedy strikes, when difficulty comes. We're not surprised by that. And at this very same time, we listen, we remember, we hear again these words that Jesus speaks to us. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And Luther, when he, when he wrote on, he said, you can almost listen into these words as kind of a gentle rebuke from Jesus. Like a, he's poking you in the ribs a little bit because he's right next to you. He gets to do that. He pokes you in the ribs a little bit and says, as a gentle child, you're not going to worry about this, are you? You're not going to be filled with terror and fear. over. You're not going to be destroyed by that, are you? I'm with you. I'm your God and your Savior. I've, I've washed you in my blood. I've chosen you. You are mine and washed clean in your baptism. You will not be destroyed by this. And Luther says, Jesus speaks to us and says, be of good cheer and take heart. Take heart, Jesus says, because for you I have overcome the world. I've overcome those enemies. So do not let your hearts be troubled. The sin that burdens your conscience, the sin that the devil wants to try and use to, to cause you to be afraid, to, to have you look at the trouble and the pain that comes and view it only as anger from God punishing you. No, Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled. That sin that burdens your conscience has been fully atoned for in the suffering and death and resurrection of your great substitute. It, it grieves the heart of our Savior to see to see the needless suffering of, of his people. It grieves the heart of our Savior to see us suffer, to be wrapped up in fear and burdened by guilt. And that's the reason that Jesus speaks such t- tender words to us all over the place in the Gospels. But you, you remember those words, come to me all you who are weary and burdened, and not just physically for those of us who are tired. Come to me all you who are weary and burdened, your conscience, your heart, your emotions, your relationships. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Remember this. Know this. Jesus is not too busy running the universe to take care of the problems and to help you with them. Not so busy running the universe that he he can't help you with the problems that you have in raising the children that he has given you. He's not too busy to help you with the struggles that you have in your marriage, with the difficulty that you have at work, or the, the fears that you might have over what the future holds. No, in all those things, he provides the patient, forgiving, enduring love that you need. He's not so occupied with controlling all things for the good of his church here on earth that he isn't aware of and concerned with 
the good of our little church here. That he will bless the word that we share and the work that we do to proclaim his name. Our Savior is not so distracted by planning and preparing eternity that he doesn't think of you every moment of every day. That's how powerful he is. He can give you his undivided attention at the same time that he gives it to me. Impossible, you might say, not for God. Not for Jesus. He's the one who says, I've, I've engraved you on the palms of my hands. I could never forget you. You are my child, he says. And your fears and your anxiety are no match for my love and for my power. So do not let your hearts be troubled. Now these words are not going to be of any kind of comfort to a, a proud sinner that, that stubbornly clings to their sin. They're not going to be of any comfort to one who refuses to admit that they are wrong, who refuses and denies the very words of God that show them that their heart is wrong, that their way is wrong, that their priorities are wrong. These words are not going to be any comfort to us if we want to kind of try and tell God that he doesn't know what he's talking about when he says, your hearts, boy, they are going to lead you astray if you look at them alone. The comfort is for sinners that cry out like we have already today. Lord, have mercy. I'm a sinner, and my guilt and my sin are more than I can bear. My fear of death and punishment, it consumes me sometimes. Have mercy on me, Lord. The shame of my actions and my words and my heart, it just simply overwhelms me. Have mercy on me, O Lord. And to the repentant sinner, Jesus says, well, no longer let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust in me for the mercy that you need. Trust in my payment for your sin. Trust in my promise for your strength. And trust in my death for your life. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen. We join our hearts together.